It was a very busy week. A uh, lot of times on the phone, a lot of straightening out problems, a lot of calming down dealers and having to find orders that the orders were lost and find out why orders wasn't produced. And Oh, this is a very long week, and uh, I still a little stressed. And so I was just praying, and uh, I heard the word contract. Everybody say contract. contract. Have you ever signed a contract? You have, right? Did you ever get a car? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? That, that you share with the bank? Yeah. You signed the contract. Did you ever get a house? Right? That you share with the bank? You signed a you signed the contract, right? Yeah. Right? Contract. And so I heard contract. And then the Lord and then the Lord spoke to me. And the Lord just gave me this verse. Luke twenty two twenty. And so I saw this verse, and the Lord said, my people do not know what they do when they take communion. Yeah. You don't understand what you're saying. You don't understand the purpose of it and the fullness. <laughs> and so we're going to go over that this morning, and we're going to look at it. And this could turn into a series. I know David loves when I say series. We don't know, but I want you to understand your covenant with God. Amen. I want you to understand that you have a, a contract with God. Amen. And that, you know what? Oftentimes, we see what the person does. For instance, when you buy the car and the bank gives you the check. And you take the check to the car lot and you give them the check and you drive the car away. That's not the end of the contract. See, every month you have a responsibility to keep that contract enforced. If you don't pay your payments, the bank says you voided your contract. Amen? Amen? And some things in our life is because of the fact that, you know what? We don't understand that we have a responsibility in Christ as well. Whoa. Heavy in here. But you do. You have a responsibility. The Bible says seek him. You have a responsibility to seek him. The Bible says to worship him in spirit and in truth. Everybody say worship. 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 Right? You have a responsibility to worship God. You have a responsibility to read God's word. For David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Right? You have a responsibility to go into your closet and to hear the voice of your father. That's what I mean by responsibility. And we do. We have responsibility. Right? The Bible says faith without works is what? Dead. Say it again. Faith without works is what? Dead. Dead. Dead right? Dead. It's, not, it's not just the confession. Right? It's the life behind the confession. Amen. See, it's the confession works when it comes out of a pure heart. Because Jesus said that, or James wrote that you can also confess things, right, out of lust. And that's why you don't receive. Mm -hmm. Because of the heart. So I have a responsibility to keep my heart with God. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a little head here. Can we breathe? <gasps> that's the bad part. Now we're going to get into the good part. All right. Father, have your way this morning. Anoint your messenger. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Father, I pray that you be glorified and you be lifted up, Lord Jesus. Lord, Lord, I am but a mortal man. Lord, this is such, Lord God, a, a deep, Lord God, revelation to your children. 
Lord, I need the Holy Spirit to bring it forth. I need the Holy Spirit to inspire. I need the Holy Spirit to speak, Lord. Lord, I just yield to you this morning. Holy Spirit, speak through me. Holy Spirit, anoint our eyes that we may see. Anoint our ears that we may hear. Anoint our hearts that we may receive. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Jesus said, this cup, talking about the communion cup, is the new covenant between God and his people. Who's the, who's the cup between? God and his people. Right? It says, an agreement confirmed with my blood. So this contract was written in blood. This wasn't a contract that was typed on a typewriter or on a word processor or on a computer. This is, an, this is a contract that was written in the blood of Jesus. <whistles> Realize how powerful that is? Yeah. This is a contract that is so binding, hell can't touch it. That's right. Amen. 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 This is a contract that's so binding that Mortal is going to change to immortality. Amen. This is a contract that's so binding that one moment I'll be on earth yes. and the next moment I'll be in yeah. glory yeah. Yeah. by the twinkling of an eye. Yeah. How do I get there? Because I have a contract with God yeah. that yeah. says I have a right yeah. that when the trumpet sounds and the angels yeah. shout, I have a right to go up in the catching away of the saints and to be with my Jesus forever and ever and ever. That contract also says, it says that by his written in blood, that contract says by his stripes, we are already healed. Right? How can I pray in faith? How can I believe that you're going to be healed when I pray? Because it's a contract written in blood that says you will be healed by his strength. That's how I know it. That contract is binding. Hell cannot stop it. Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against this contract. So every time you take communion, you are saying that you are in agreement That's right. with that contract. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Every time you take communion, yeah. you are saying, Lord, I agree with this contract. Yes, Lord. Amen. Lord, I reaffirm this contract in yes. me. Amen, Lord. Huh? In me. Paul said to Timothy, you know what? Sometimes you've got to stir up the gifts that are in you. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. How many has ever had this? Sometimes you got to stir it up. Right? Jesus told the disciples, let me wash your feet. Oh, no, Lord. He said, you're clean, but your feet are a little dusty for walking in the world. How many sometimes know your feet gets a little dusty? And you need to have a refreshing. And you need to have a cleansing. Yeah. You need to get rid of the dust of the world that has come upon you, right? Yeah. My mom lived on a road that was a dirt road. And it was amazing. In the summertime, mom would get out and she would scrub the porch early in the morning. By 1 o'clock, there was dust all over the porch. And she had to scrub it again. Some of you, do you hear what I'm saying? Sometimes when you walk in the dusty world, you get dust. And you have a responsibility to go to Jesus and get a fresh washing of the blood that cleanses you from all unrighteousness. Amen. Woo! That's in my covenant. I can go to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need a washing again. Yes. Woo, Jesus. I confess. Right. Ooh, I need a washing. Yeah. And he washes you. That's in your covenant. Amen. Ooh, that's what we've taken this morning. Can I hear it? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, I'm going to get you shouting yet. Ooh, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank so I want you to understand that this morning, when you take communion, which, by the way, Jackie had a great idea to do it. Get them little cups so that everybody can have their own little cup. And uh, hey, you know what? 
The enemy tries to do stuff with that COVID stuff, but I tell you what, God's smarter. Amen. Amen. You know what? God already had the plan. You know what? Years ago, God already had this planned out. God knew this was coming. God didn't wake up one March and go like, oh, there's a COVID-19 in the United States. They're going to shut down my churches. What am I going to do? God went, I already got this planned out. Amen. Amen. God said, I already got this worked out. There's nothing in your life that happens that God hasn't seen a way back. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, a contract is a binding agreement. Everybody says binding agreement. Binding agreement. So I want you to understand something this morning. That this contract, this covenant that Jesus wrote in his book, God meant it to be forever. God didn't need for you to walk in it for a year, then That's right. Amen. or for six months, or five years, or ten years. God meant yes. this to be forever. Yes. Amen. God meant you had all these benefits forever. And it doesn't stop here, because when the trumpet sounds, that's the fulfillment of that contract. Oh, and cause, oh, grave, oh, death, yes. where is your sting, where yes. is your victory? Yes. Amen. That's the final foe that this contract is. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why you can stand Amen. at the casket of a loved one that's in Christ. That's been born again through the blood and the spirit of God. You can look at them and say, I'll miss you. But I'll see you a little later. Right. Amen. Amen. Because you know you're going to see them a little later. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? I don't know how people do it, but they'll have that hope. Right. Amen. Amen. Found my mother laying on the floor. She died. We found her on the kitchen floor. The only way Jack and I got through was we knew where she is. Yes. Amen. Amen. We knew where she is. So let's look at this, all right? Maybe. All right. Technical difficulties, now what happened? Praise the Lord. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise just, the Lord. just begin to praise the Lord and worship. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can I tell you something? The devil does not want you to know who you are. That's right. Amen. That's right. As long as he has you believing that you are defeated, yeah. you are defeated. Amen. As long as he has you believing you're never going to get well, you're never going to get well. Amen. As long as he has you believing you're always going to be in poverty, you're always going to be in poverty. Amen. Because as a man thinketh, so he is. Can I say that again? As a man thinketh, so he is. So as long as he has you thinking these thoughts, he has you. You know what? As long as you keep thinking, oh, my loved ones are never going to get saved. They're never going to get out of that. You know what? You're right. You're just declaring it over them. Right? Right? As a, right? What you're speaking is coming out of a heart of unbelief, and you've done sealed it in their life. Amen. Huh? Amen. A friend of mine growing up. He said, I'm going to go to Vietnam, but he said, I won't come back. I said, Roger, would you quit saying that? He said, I'm going to go to Vietnam, I'm not going to come back. His last mission, his last mission, he was coming home. He was a paratrooper. What happened? He got shot out of the air. His last mission. You know, and I kept thinking, and I wouldn't even say it, and I thought, did he speak that over him? Amen. Did he cause that to happen? Amen. Do, do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. See, so part of this agreement, and we're going to get into that, is that you have to change your thinking of who you are. Amen. Right? Amen. right? You have to change your thinking of who you are. You have to quit looking at you through the mirror, and you have to start looking at you through the word. Come 
You have to quit listening to what people say you are. And you have to start listening to who God says you are. You right? And that's what we need to do to have victory in our life. So Hebrews 8.13, uh, this is in the Passion Version. It says, this proves that by establishing this new covenant, the first is now obsolete or ready to expire and about to disappear. Yeah. Now, I love that. That word disappear in the Aramaic, do you know what it means? Are you all turning your mind going too fast? You know what it means? It means to give birth. Everybody say give birth. Give birth. So do you know when this new covenant started? It was when a young woman gave birth to the Son of God. Woo! When Adam and Eve was in the garden, God saw Mary. hear what I'm saying? I don't know what you're going through right now, but I want you to know something. God sees the victory that's already yes. done. Amen. Can I say that again? Amen. Part of this binding agreement is that God says, I will give you victory. God says that weapon will fail. It cannot prosper. Amen. God Amen. said the darkness cannot overcome right. you. God yeah. said there's nothing that can bind you. Amen. There is nothing that can hurt you. In Luke 10, 19, it says, no power of the enemy Amen. shall hurt you. Amen. No power. Amen. There is no power on earth that can stop Amen. this agreement from being fulfilled in your life. When you take the communion this morning, you are in agreement with the agreement. Amen. You are declaring all the benefits of the contract are mine. Amen. I have them all. Woo! Hallelujah. You know what? It can also be when it says about disappearing, it can also mean that God has made a way for our old life of pleasing the flesh and leaning towards sin to disappear in a new beginning comes. A new birth. So the old covenant was of the law. The law had no grace. The law had no grace. You sin. You got judgment. David numbered the Israelites. The death angel came. Amen. Samson played around with Delilah. He got blind and ended up killing himself. Amen. Ooh, can I hear an amen? Amen. David looked him up on the housetop, ended up losing a child and almost lost his kid. And his son almost took his kingdom from him. Amen. Amen. But oh, in this new covenant, God says there's grace. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Ooh, can, I, can I just see a wave offering for grace? Yes, yes. How many is thankful for grace in your life? Yes, you. How many has done something stupid and you thought, why in the world did I do that? That was stupid. But praise God, God says, ooh, there's grace. There's grace. Hallelujah. There's grace. Hebrews 8, 7 and 8. It says, If the first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no need for a second covenant yes. to replace it. Amen. But when God found fault with the people. So, let me say this. The reason the first one was obsolete wasn't because of God. That's right. Amen. It was because of you and I. Yeah. yeah. Amen. See, God made a covenant with Adam that was made to be eternal. That's right. Amen. Adam was to forever live in the garden. Yes. Yes. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Adam was to forever have dominion yes. over the garden. Yes. Adam was forever to be able to just get up in the morning and go.
grab his breakfast off of the trees and the berries and everything. Yeah. You know what? And Adam would go to sleep and get up the next morning, and the trees and the berries would replenish herself. Just like, just like Israel's clothes never got old in the, in the wilderness. Amen. Can I hear an amen? That's right. <clears throat> Did you hear what I'm saying? God was showing us a little piece of what the garden would have been like with Israel in the wilderness. Do you ever think of that? Their clothes never got old. Never lost a button. Have, have anybody here ever, ever lose a button? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. And if you, and if you, if you ever lost it, it, runs under, and it rolls underneath something and you can't find it. And you, it's like, do I really want to get down on my knees and crawl around trying to find that thing or what, you know? Sometimes like, you know what? Goodbye, sure. <laughs> they never had a button. They never, and never did a garment ever, the threads ever begin to fray. Amen. Never. And God says, that's part of the, of the covenant that I want you to see that's coming now when oh, Jesus comes. You hear me? That's part of that covenant. See, so the reason that the covenant, the first covenant of law had to fail was because man failed. Man was at fault. So God had a choice to make. God said, Do I want man to be here and me here? Or do I want man in me to be like this? So he sent Jesus. So instead of you being on the outside looking in, you can have an intimate relationship with your daddy. See, I, I was blessed for a couple of years because I had an intimate relationship with my father. I would sit on his lap and watch football games. Wherever he was, I was. They called me Little Bill because they knew I'd be. They, they knew that when he, that when they saw the six foot four man come, they'd see this probably what I don't know, it was like maybe four foot eleven or five foot kid come running out there, right? They knew I would be there. They looked for me when. One day he was in the, the uh, <clears throat> one day I was in the fire station doing something, and he was outside and he went, "Where's little Bill? Surely he's got to be here." Dad said, "Who?" The kid went to him like he went, "Hell, he's in there." You know what? That's what the devil needs to say about you. When he sees your father, he needs to see you. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Come on. See Jimmy. See Jesus said. When you see me, you see who? Can I say that again? Jesus said, when you see me, you see who? The Father, right? So when they see you, they need to see the Father. That's part of this covenant. Woo! Amen. Let's move on. I know it's exciting. Hebrews 8, 6. I love this verse. I love this verse. I love this verse. Can I tell you, I love this verse. You're going to love it too. Because I'm going to make you love it. It says, <clears throat> but now Jesus, our high priest, has been given a ministry that is far superior to the old priesthood. Amen. For he is the one who mediates for us a far better covenant with God Based on better promises. Everybody say better promises. Better promises. I have better promises than Adam had. I have better promises than David had. I have better promises than Abraham had. The Bible says in Hebrews, all of them. Conquer giants, threw down cities. <clears throat> they did all of this, but they could not obtain mm -hmm. the covenant right. that you and I have. Right. Yeah. That's shouting round. 
Amen. You just praise him for a moment. Just yes. praise him for a moment. Oh, yes. <coughs> just praise him for a moment. Hallelujah. 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 Woo, we have better promises. Joshua destroyed Jericho. Caleb got his mountain. Conquered at an, at an, at an old age. Conquered the enemy. Yet he did not see the promises and walk in the promises that you and I have. We are so blessed. Oh, we are. Yes. Yeah. Right? We don't understand the promises that God has given to us. Thank you. I'm amazed that when, when I would do interviews at work, one of the first questions they would ask is, what's the benefits? You know, do you have insurance? Do you have uh, eye, eye insurance? Do you have dental insurance? Do you have a 401k? Do you have a pension? I mean, they ask because they want to know all the benefits before they say yes. The problem with us is that we say yes, but then we never study the benefits. We never study the benefits. Mm -hmm. You have great promises in this covenant. Great promises. Hebrews 8, 9, and 10. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand. Everybody say, took them by the hand. Took them by the hand. Do you realize God says, I asked they took Israel? By the hand. And I led them. Yeah. I led them. Out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But they did not remain faithful to me. Yeah. I literally showed them my power. Showed them my love. Literally I took a nation. That was broken. And in bondage. And in slavery. And in poverty. And in one night. I took that nation. And I made them the richest nation in the world. <clears throat> and I let them out by my hand. So I turned my back on them, says the Lord. <clears throat> For this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel. On that day, says the Lord, I will put my laws on their minds. And I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. The first promise that you have of the new covenant is that, is that when you're born again of the water and of the spirit, the water is the word, for he washes us with the washing of the water of the word. Yes. Peter yeah. says, I've received an incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. I'm born of the Spirit. So when I'm born again, I receive the Spirit and the Word together in my life. So God has now wrote His laws. His Word is now in my heart and in my mind. I now, I don't have to go to a priest or, or to a rabbi. I have the Word with inside of me. Woo, I can pray and God will speak the word to me. I can be in the midst of a challenge. And all of a sudden, God speaks a word to me. Out of the word. I told you there about like there with Jackie. How God spoke to me. The guardian angels had hands. Yeah. Amen. And I said, guardian angel, take your hands and push the stone out. A couple hours later, the stone was out. Amen. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's been times God has spoken a word to me out of the word. That's called a rhema word. That's a word that becomes alive in you. 
Everybody say alive in me. Alive. That's, that's a portion of the word that the Holy Ghost breathes on and it becomes illuminated. Amen. Right? It becomes lit up and it's like, whoa! You have read that before but it never meant anything. And now all of a sudden it's like, there's my answer. There's my answer. Why? Because the word and the spirit are inside of me now. That's part of my agreement with God. God says, I will come in and live inside of you. Yes. Woo, just give him praise and glory yes. and honor. Yes. Lord, I thank you. Paul says, I am the yes. temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm going to have to drive for the next five days and preach on the mountainside and get my voice back. I try not to yell too much at Jeremy. <laughs> she yells back. So we have, everybody say better promises. Now, I want you to see. This is the first benefit of the new covenant. Everybody say forgiveness and grace. Forgiveness and grace. Have you ever needed God's grace? Have you ever needed forgiveness? Can I tell you something though? If you want to receive grace, you have to sow grace. If you want to receive forgiveness, you have to sow forgiveness. Because if, if you don't forgive, God won't forgive you. You tie the hands of God. Some people, even some that's listening today, you know what? The reason you're going through things in your life is because you've tied the hands of God by not forgiving. <laughs> by not showing grace. I'm going to move on from that one. Let's continue on. Hebrews 12, verse 23. And as members of the church of the firstborn, all our names have been legally registered as citizens. Do you know what that means? How many filled out the census? Right? You had to fill out the census, right? To let them know that you were an American citizen and, and where you live. Whenever you accept Christ, you are given a birth certificate with a new name. That only God knows now. All heaven had a party at your birth. All heaven rejoiced at your birth. Yes. Yeah. That when you set the, in, in October, I think it was 21st, 1976, heaven rejoiced over me. Yes. Because yeah. yeah. I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. There was a party in heaven. Yeah. Or, if, or if, if you're from West Virginia, there was a hoedown. Yeah. <laughs> But there was rejoicing in heaven. And it says, I love that. And Jesus, we are, we are all the firstborn. Now, Romans 8, 16 and 17 says, we are joint heirs with Christ. So what Paul wrote here in Hebrews is the same thing that he wrote in Romans, I am a joint heir with Christ. Every promise and blessing of Christ is mine. Yes, amen. Do you hear me? Thank you. Everything the Father promised is mine. Amen. I have a legal right yes. to go to the throne in the name of Jesus yes. and say, Lord, I need my electric bill. I have a legal right to do that. I have a legal right to go to the throne and say, Lord, save my child. Save my mate. Lord, save, Lord God, my grandchild. Lord, save them. And I have a legal right to go to the very throne room of the almighty God 
and put my petition down. And there's no angel can stop me. There's nothing that can keep me away from going to the throne of God and saying, Lord, I need this. Yes. And God said, God promised me, I'll hear you and I'll answer. Yes. Why? Because through this covenant that we are taking this morning, part of the promise of the covenant is that you ask and God hears. Amen. And he answers. Woo! That's shouting round. Do you hear me? That's why it says I can go boldly. Why can I go boldly to the throne room of God? Because I have a legal right to go there. 24 hours a day. I have a legal right to go to the throne of God. Because I am a joint heir with Christ. I am a member of the firstborn church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Woo. Yes, hallelujah. That's who you are. Thank you, Lord. Do you know what? Some of us tell our problems more to other people than we do talk to God. Amen. Just kind of let that thing sink in for a minute. We tell them to other people who don't nobody get this wrong, but they can't do anything for you. That's right. <laughs> amen. That's right. Amen. Yeah. But we'll spend hours, and I said spend, not invest. We'll spend hours telling them everything that's wrong. And then we tell, and then we go to God in about five minutes. Shouldn't we turn that around? Shouldn't we invest? Everybody say invest. See, when I invest, I expect a return. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? When I invest, I, I expect a return. So if I invest my time with God at the throne, that means I am expecting a return of, of an answer. Woo! Amen. Hallelujah! And that's part of my agreement. God says, you have a right come to this throne. Come! Invest your request to me and watch me give you a return. Ooh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moving on, it says, and we have come to Jesus who established a new covenant with his blood. Sprinkled upon the mercy seat. Woo! Jesus went in there and he took his blood and he sprinkled it on the mercy seat. See, the Bible says that the same tabernacle that was on earth was a shadow of the one that was in heaven. Y'all, yeah. y'all, right? Y'all hear me? Uh, I'll, I'll go that later because I can see. It. But anyway, so he sprinkled his blood on that mercy seat, which released. Mercy for all who receive the blood. Amen. Mercy. Mercy. Ooh, mercy. Ooh, have you ever said, Lord, mercy? I said, Lord, mercy. Mercy, mercy. Mercy, Lord, I need mercy. Upon the mercy seat, the blood that continues. Everybody say continues. To speak from where? From heaven. Part of my covenant, when you drink of that cup this morning, you are saying... I have mercy. Yeah. And his mercy is not just for today, but his mercy is for tomorrow yeah. and for the next day and for the next week and for the next year and for the next couple years. Why? Because his blood is continually speaking from heaven. Mercy over them, Father. Yeah. Mercy. Woo. Forgiveness. A better message than Abel's blood that cries from the earth Justice. So you have, everybody say forgiveness. Forgiveness. See, Abel's blood cried out for justice. Mm -hmm. Jesus' blood cries out for forgiveness and mercy. See, do you know what mercy is? Mercy says, I shouldn't have done it, but I did it anyways. And I know I did it. And God says, but I'm going to forgive you anyways if you ask. Woo! 
Can that sink in for a moment? God says, you're right, you shouldn't have done that. You're right, you were wrong. But because of the blood, I have mercy on you, and I forgive you. Now, I want to finish. I have an underline. Make very sure that you never refuse to listen to God when he speaks. Now, what does that mean? Anytime that you get out of line, anytime you get off the path, God speaks to you. God shows you. Hello? Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. Might be in the midnight hours. Might be God sent a friend to you and said, hey, what, you know, uh, are you sure you should be doing that? Are you sure? Are you really? Or maybe God will speak a scripture to you that will tell you that's wrong. Don't do that. Right? That's wrong. So, Paul says, whenever God speaks to you, don't turn from it. Amen. Listen to it and repent. You want to keep the agreement active? Remember I said about at the beginning you have responsibilities? This is one of the responsibilities you have. Is that when God comes to you and God says, that's not right. Stop it. Change it. Don't do it no more. And you continue to do it, then it's sin. Yes. But God gives you a space of time. Everybody say space of time. Space, space of time. It tells you in Hebrews. God is it. God is so see, this is what mercy does. Mercy is when God says, keep coming to you. But then when you refuse to listen, then that's when the big things come out. Amen? So Paul says part of our agreement is that God agrees to come to you in person. There is not one person who has backslidden who God has not given them a space of time to repent. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. There is nobody that, that can say, well, I didn't know because God has gone to everyone. God has told everyone, I don't like it. That's wrong. Stop it. Don't do it. That's sin. So, so everybody is given, that's part of our promise. Can I hear an amen? amen? That's a better promise where God says, I come to you in pride. Amen. I come to you in the midnight hours. Yeah. Right? I might speak to you while you're driving in your car. You know what? I've had people said that they've even been driving down the road and they've seen a billboard and went, oh my Lord. That's God. I need to finally hear. Can I? I hear an amen? Okay. And finally, finally right here, it says, those who heard him speak his living word on earth found nowhere to hide. So what chance is there for us to escape if we turn our backs on God and refuse to hear his warnings? The final part of this covenant, I've I blessed you, but I'm also giving you responsibilities. Amen. Yeah. Amen? So you need to see, you have responsibilities. You have a responsibility that when God speaks to you, you have a responsibility to repent. Right? God says, I give you a time to repent. But if you don't repent, and if you turn back, then you, what you've done is this. God says, I got you in my hand. I have you covered. I have you protected. But if you jump out of my hand, I'll come after you. Amen. I go after the lost one. But if you keep running from me, and running from me, and running from me, there is a time where I will let you run. And the covenant is broken. 
So this morning, when God speaks to you, listen. Obey. Right? What did Jesus tell them? Go and what? Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. So this morning you have a covenant that will heal you, that will deliver you, that will meet your needs. This covenant will do everything that you need in life. And when you take of that communion cup this morning, you are declaring you are in, in agreement with this covenant. Isn't that powerful? So, we're going to start, we're, we're going to go ahead and take communion, but before we do, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, it says for a man to examine himself. That's one good thing about the communion. It allows me time to examine myself. For me to just, you know what it's like? It's like I had to have a CAT scan done. It's kind of like God takes the Holy Ghost and he does a CAT scan over your, over your heart. So you can see what's in it. So this morning, can we just take a minute or two and then we're going to take communion then we're going to let you go out and have your chicken or your steak or your hot dog or maybe your toast. I don't know what you're having. But can we just take a moment and examine ourselves? Father, we just, Lord, we just examine ourselves right now. Lord, we just ask you, Lord God, to just, Lord, just, just look inside our heart. Lord, I if, if, if you're out there watching, if, you don't, if, if, if that was a time for you to examine yourself, then if you want to have communion with us, you know what? If you, have a, if you have a cracker, if you have a glass of water, if you don't have grape juice, whatever you have, you can take it with us and share in the agreement of this promise for you. So, but examine yourself first. Examine yourself. And if you've never accepted Christ, now is your time to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now is the time to say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, forgive me. Lord, come into my heart. Lord, I believe you died on the cross. I believe your blood cleanses all my sins. Lord, I ask you right now to come into my life with your word and your spirit, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer, you're worthy. So let's just examine ourselves for a moment. Lord, just speak to us. I've actually had people at communion. God spoke a name to them, and they had to go ask somebody to forgive them. At the communion. I've actually had people, you know, that God spoke to them during this time. And they had to do things. So this is a time that between, this is just you and God. Nobody's looking around but me. And I have a license on my wall so that I can look. If you need healing, just declare when you take the cup by his stripes, I am healed. You just receive the healing promise in your agreement when you take the cup. I've seen a lot of people get healed at the communion because you know why? The agreement is put in force. And they become one with the agreement and poof. Maybe if you have a financial need, just thank the Lord that he's your provider. 
He promised he would take care of you. He promised that if he feeds the sparrows and clothes the lily, how much more will he take care of you? So if you have a financial need, just receive that promise of him, of his provision in your life while you take the communion. Receive that promise. Do you know what else is in that promise? Peace. I feel some of you need peace. Some of you need peace. Right? He promises in his agreement with you, in his contract, that he gives you peace that passes understanding. So you don't have to understand what's going on in your life. You can still have peace. Amen. So receive his peace. <clears throat> receive his peace right now. So Father, we have examined ourselves. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that Lord, that you speak to us, that you reveal to us. Now, Father, as we get ready to take this communion, we ask you, Father, to bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. So Paul said that the Lord Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks for it. So Lord, right now, Lord, we declare, Lord God, Lord, that this, Lord God, little wafer, Lord God, Lord God, represents to us the body of Christ that was given freely, Lord God, for us. The body of Christ, Lord God, that bore our sin, bore our transgressions, that took our pain upon it, that took our grief and our sorrow. Lord, we declare that, Lord, when we take this bread, Lord, that we put all of our cares on you, Lord, because, Lord, you carry all of our grief. You carry all of our sorrow, all of our pain. Lord, you're carrying it now, Lord. So, Lord, we take the, when we are in agreement with the promise, Lord God, that you are carrying all these things, Lord. We give them to you in your precious name. Amen. Take of it. Take of it away. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. The Lord is telling somebody that you need to draw the body of a man and you need to write down everything that you're going through, every pain, every bit of sorrow, every bit of grief, and you need to write it on that picture. And you need to declare the promise of Isaiah that Jesus has already carried them for you. And every time it comes against you, you go to that picture and you look at it and you say, oh, no, devil. Oh, no, devil. Remember Jackie preached, oh, no, devil. Oh, no, devil. Jesus has already carried that. Jesus has already taken care of that. And you stare at that until in your heart, you know that Jesus has already taken care of that. That's for somebody this morning. That's for somebody this morning. Because you need a visual. The Lord told me that you need to have a visual. That when the enemy attacks you, that it's hard for you to see the victory. So you need to have a visual that you can look at. Amen? So then he took the cup. He said, this cup is a new covenant between God and his people. He said, do this in remembrance of me as oft as you drink it. Drink of the cup. Father, we thank you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the precious blood that was shed. For without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission for sin. 
Lord, we thank you for the precious blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord just reminded me, somebody, you need, we had someone in our church years ago who had a lot of health issues. And while well, she literally was dying. And the Lord showed her to draw a picture of a man's back. And the Lord told her to write everything that was wrong. Everything, she, her heart, the diabetes, the blockages, you know, all that. Write it all on, right, right, on that back. And then take a, a, a red pen or, or a red marker and just draw a line through each one. And then she wrote on at the bottom the scripture where Peter said, by his stripes, we are healed. And Jackie can verify this. The sicknesses started getting healed. She put it on her refrigerator. And every time she was in the kitchen, she would go over there. And she would say, I thank you, Lord, that, there, that Lord, that your stripe covered this. Your stripe covered that. Your stripe covered this. Your stripe covered that. Amen. And every time she would look at that, every time she would be healed. And she went from not even being able to help to being a major part of our church. She actually took with Jackie, and her and Jackie started the People That Love Center. That's when PTL had those centers. And, and she was such a worker, going from daylight to dark sometimes, where before she couldn't hardly even get out of the chair. Why? Because she needed a visual to see that Christ was the healer. Yes. And maybe today there's some of you that, you know what? Maybe you're battling something in your body. Maybe you have a loved one who's battling something in their body. Yes, it doesn't have to be a perfect drawing. Just draw the back of a man. And just write on it what you're going through. And then put a red stripe through it. And then write that scripture at the bottom. By his stripes, we are healed in Peter. And declare it over yourself. And watch faith rise up within you. And watch you receive the mind of Christ. And watch that promise become, of effect, become effective in your life. See, that's the power that you have in this agreement. See, when you took this cup this morning, you were in agreement with that agreement. Say, I'm in agreement, I'm in agreement. with God's agreement. I am agree. I am in agreement with the new covenant. I am a joint heir with Christ because of the blood. Father, I thank you for what you've done, Lord. I thank you, God, for, Lord God, for blessing us and for moving in our, in our life. I thank you, Lord, for all the precious people that have come out. Father, I ask you to bless them, Father. I ask, Lord, for your hand to be upon them, Lord God. I ask for your grace and mercy to overshadow them. And, Lord, I pray for everyone out there that's been listening. Father, I just pray for your grace and mercy to cover their life in Jesus' name.